You know, today's kind of a free for all show. We have a few things going on, but uh, maybe some some reflections, some more personal things, some things uh, that have happened that you're looking forward to in the next year. I know that I don't typically uh, jump in and get involved in this, but like, uh, I mean, this upcoming year could be really cool as far as I'm concerned. There's a few projects coming up. I got some stuff working with Rick and Ann Ryan. Uh, there's some uh, things in motion from the activist side of things with uh, some of the groups and organizations we're involved with that will be continuing with some legislative action and some and some other things. Uh, I'm going to be involved with the uh, social lounge up in South Casca, being part of the coffee service up there, which will be working in conjunction with John Sinclair uh, as he brands it and proceeds will go to uh, his foundation. There's a John Sinclair Foundation and there's one in Europe, there's one being uh, Put together for here and now uh, and that's where will be the designation for those things uh, we're going to open up the third store with botanical company which will be right next door to that social lounge and uh and keep going from there some new prospects are coming up all the time and just a lot of stuff going on for me and i'm i'm i'm, I'm torn by all the tragedy of this last year uh the pandemic our failed leadership all of the deaths and illness that were unnecessarily caused and uh and i know i'm very aware that's a very rough year for a lot of people and, and uh that's not lost on me i i am really looking forward to the future though There's a lot of stuff going on and probably can't even explain it all and all the things happening but uh it's all good and and uh, i'm excited about this upcoming year so including this show which will start off with the improvements will probably start off with a few glitches and we'll probably have to work through a few things, but that's how it goes. But uh, looking forward to that too. We'll get a few laughs in there. But uh, anyway, Rick, what do you think? Well, uh, we were on Medical Mondays last night, a couple of us, uh, Colin and Jamie, myself, we talked about what our most memorable moment of last year of this current ending year is. Uh, and my very first thought was Donald Trump loses. Not Joe Biden wins, Donald Trump loses. So removing Donald Trump from office, although it's not personal to me, it was very personal to me. And after a 2020 where we were completely inundated with nothing but Trump's name in the news day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out, we started with the impeachment. We went through with, with the whole uh, campaign nonsense. And then after the election, we went through with the whole whiny crybaby bullshit, which we're continuing to, to deal with. Uh, the second biggest moment of 2020 for me, again, not on a personal level, but still personal to me, was uh, Michael Thompson getting committed. Um, and when you look at both of those incidents, one of them is a cannabis community thing, one of them is not a cannabis community thing, both of them are the results, in my personal opinion, both of them are the results of, of a lot of very hard work by people who actually give a shit. And in 2020, sometimes it was difficult to tell who gives a shit and who is just existing waiting to die because there are some people out there who didn't seem like they were really trying hard to help society to help themselves and that they were more than happy to drag other people down with them um, entitlement was both on full display during the mask wearing fiasco and also it was challenged by black lives matter after george floyd's death and and so many other so many other senseless tragedies that we saw um so in 2021 what i anticipate a lot of changes for the cannabis community a lot of them positive there'll be some that we will disagree about and some that we'll fight about but we have an opportunity we have an opportunity to capitalize on this new interest in in not only activism but also in things like voting or or participating in the system for a long time, people didn't want to participate in the system for very good reason. The system shit upon those people to the most degree. Um, but 2021, moving forward, more people are engaged. In my personal opinion, America is better when we have more people engaged. Um, the conversations are more robust. People are not excluded. Uh, we explore old wounds and discover new healing techniques. And that's what our nation 
absolutely needs in 2021. And if you look beyond our own borders, that's what the whole planet needs in 2021. If one thing the coronavirus might have done for planet Earth is perhaps made cooperation between nations more important because in combating the virus we're going to we're going to share our secrets we're going to share our medicines with people that we may not politically agree with where we may not ideologically find ourselves aligned and when we do we create we create friends and we destroy old enmities deb young what do you think about that yeah i mean most most of my anxiety this year has been around trump surrounding Trump. So yeah, it was quite, quite a, a massive thing to finally see him defeated. Um, I think it's, it's going to take years to repair the damage he's done. I mean, you're talking about, you know, reaching out to people around the world. For the past four years, America has been telling people around the world to go fuck themselves. So, you know, we're in it for ourselves. So it's going to take a lot to get past that. And that's the message of America that. first. America first yeah. to us sounds great, but to the rest of the world sounds like this. America first does not sound great. That's not what America's about. We've always, not. that's not. So um, I don't know what I'm looking forward to 2021. I'm hoping that finally we'll get an either descheduling or decrim or legalization on a federal level. There's been a lot of talk about it. Is it going to happen in the first year? Probably not. It might not even happen in the first four years, but hey, it's something to even think about because it's a possibility they publicly spoke it. The candidates publicly spoke about it. It's the first time ever that we've heard that where the actual, you know, president-elect says he's gonna do it. And, and the uh, the president, the vice president-elect that claims that she's behind it too. So I'm anxious to see that. That would be great per, on a personal level. I've got three new strains in my caregiver growth. So that's exciting. We just harvested those. So in about three or four weeks, we'll be checking that out. I haven't, I haven't infused any new blood into the grow in about five years. So this is, this is very exciting. Well, I will and say besides that, that just, just trying to keep engaged and trying to just, just keep going, trying to be positive. Um, I think it's amazing. It, it seems like the entire world is going to get vaccinated on something that we just discovered, you know, 10 months ago. That is right. really incredible that they rolled that out really fast. So, you know, it, there's a lot of amazing things going on, even, even in the shit show that was Trump. There's still some amazing things that are happening. And it's, it's just mind boggling some of the stuff. Many people on this show need to know what those new strains are all about as well. Well, they will. Everybody will have a sampling. I mean, but they're not ready yet. We don't want to sample. Otherwise, it'll taste like we're smoking hemp. And we don't want to do that. So we're going to wait till it's cured. No you offense know, to the people who are putting it. out big quality hemp. Love my hemp people. Yeah. A lot, people, of, people, yeah. A lot <laughs> of people putting out quality. Unfortunately, I haven't had any to enjoy. Most they're of the they're out there. I hear about them. Yeah. One of these yeah. days. Deb but, mentioned. Go ahead, Deb. No, I was just going to say, so we like to put a good, you know, 30 day cure on it. It's been in the jar a few days, about a week now. So yeah, we'll all have some samples. Deb mentioned some of the things that happened congressionally. Uh, the MORE Act, although it was only passed by the House and not taken up by the Senate, it's actually a House of Congress that said cannabis should be removed from the schedule of controlled substances. Right. And it's the first time ever that's happened. It's the first time ever we've had a vote of this magnitude at this level. Uh, it is significant. Jim Salame, thank you for joining us today and for all of 2020. Your presence is much appreciated. What do you think about uh, a reflection of this past year and perhaps optimism towards the year forward? Well, I'm so happy to be here. So it's been a great year just uh, enjoying all this and uh, taking news with you guys and uh, all the little things we do, whether it be for the government or for the, the entire cause of cannabis. I, um, this past year, I think, you know, that, that there's an old prayer, like help me control the things I can and understand the things I can't control. And I think that's really uh, something to look at for the entire year as far as a, a mantra. Um, I found, you know, patience through this year, myself personally. I think as a, as a country, um, we're, we've definitely exposed a lot of things that we need to know about, that we need to see as far as who we really are as a nation, uh, so we can correct things and, and go forward with that. Um, as a globe, uh, like Rick was saying, I mean, having like global um, camaraderie is really important and uh, with leadership. Um, I, uh, for the next year coming up, I'm really excited about, um, well, before I go on to next year, I, I still, I have to say, having entheogens in the city of Ann Arbor, if not uh, entire county of Washtenaw, happen this year was really incredible. Uh, having cannabis become 
um, a, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Essential, Essential business. Essential. Thank you very much for that. Which is, which is what I brought up on Medical Mondays last night because that really brought me through the year personally. Yeah, and that's just a good yeah. feeling overall. Um, uh, and then for next year, guys, I think we're looking at just, you know, keeping some of the laws uh, from changing so it benefits, you know, everyone involved in our industry. Um, looking at psilocybin and other forms of plant medicines that can help people and moving that uh, movement. Um, I'm excited about the podcast we're doing called The Entheo Show that debuts January 8th. Um, and uh, gosh, I'm, I'm just so happy that I've, uh, you know, you figure out the great people out there. And uh, it's like somebody was saying earlier, like who's working and who's doing stuff to help people and who's just sitting on their butts. And I'm just so glad to be part of uh, the group that I'm, I'm with. And I, I can't hold a candle to most of you guys, but I'm really glad to be uh, part of this, uh, this whole thing. You know, one of the biggest secrets to a success as an advocate, and I know we don't always talk about it, is the people that you choose to surround yourself with. I mean, you can try and be an armchair advocate and sit in a circle with everybody else, burn joints and complain about the world, or you can be a sign carrying advocate and you can actually be out there in the world and bitch about things in public. <laughs> and, you know, we've been able to bitch about things in public pretty well. The cannabis industry has had media's ear for quite a while. And now that entheogens are becoming more popular uh, to use and also the decrim is, is becoming successful, I think entheogens and entheogenic substances are, are likely to get that same kind of coverage or at least similar coverage to what cannabis did in its early days. Uh, Colin, you and Jim were involved in that, in that effort to decriminalize entheogenic substances in Ann Arbor and kudos to you, a 2020 highlight to be sure. What do you think about uh, reflections and progressions? Um, well, uh, it's great that like, we were able to pull something off in 2020. Uh, through the city council, it, like I was really amazed um, to see it happen. I was surprised to see it on the agenda. I was surprised when they were discussing it and the one person I thought would be against it for sure uh, was talking herself into being a yes vote. And I thought that was really uh, cool. And one of those moments where like I was texting back with the whole uh, DNA2 group like, is this really happening? Is, is this going on? So, I mean, uh, that was really uh, awesome. Uh, you know, we uh, were able to get that done in quarantine and we were really one of the, I think the only city like outside California or uh, Denver, uh, Colorado at the time, we were like the easternmost and it was before like Washington DC was able to like vote on it um so that that's always cool to put uh, like our home on the map um and you, know, uh, you, you, you bring up a good point there uh Colin because the city council members it, it appears from the discussions we've had with you guys and with Julie and everybody it appears they actually considered the information and weighed it out and logically kind of vetted through it and decided hey your guys are right there is really no reason why we shouldn't be doing this stuff here and and uh, yeah. that is rare to see usually it's purely political even now with people who are in support of us uh there's still this huge political weight of cannabis that exists in decision making and uh, it's not as like straightforward as that and uh, yeah it's good for and i don't through in that regard historically yeah. but, but, but uh but great job and you guys given the proper information for them to consider. Yeah, and um, I know on Medical Mondays, we talked about, um, uh, Rick, you said, uh, uh, like when that Saturday, when it was announced that Donald Trump had lost the election. Um, I remember like, I feel like one of those moments, it was like, I woke up at like 6 a.m. or something, and it was like Georgia and Pennsylvania, like, they're not Biden's now ahead and it was just like okay I can go back to sleep and and like calm down a little I'll wake up around 10 and it'll be it was like all over the news <laughs> so that was a, a really that's how I remember that moment at least um and like it was just like just all my Facebook was like Stacey Abrams and uh like Pennsylvania <laughs> so uh that really yeah. was part of the American experience for the entire 2020 is, is riding the Trump train as far as media exposure and everything else too. He, you know, for all of his faults, 
The one thing he did do was dominate the news cycle in a way that other presidents were never able to do. Uh, he did it through bombastic methodology and, and by being a complete buffoon. So I'm, I'm not encouraging that, but he had his name on the lips of the first story of every news reporter's broadcast. I mean, he still got us on the crazy train. He's, he's still got us on this crazy train. I mean, I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. I mean, all those yeah. pardons. Yeah, the yeah. pardons and, and all the weirdness involved with him and the $2,000 stimulus that he didn't want to endorse before. Now he does. Those, those, like, those are, those are pardons of, of all people who who have been unjustly in prison. Did you hear what and Jared have, Kushner said? They have nothing to do with anybody's connected to Trump. For? No, he I did not, up, Deb. He set, up, he set up one of his partners with with a prostitute and, and pictures of him with a prostitute and then sent the pictures to the dude's wife. Oh, in some kind extortion. Of a, yeah, in some kind of an extortion plan, yeah. That's what he got por pardoned for. And believe it or not, I saw it was Chris Christie, I guess, prosecuted the case as, as the prosecuting attorney when it came uh, down. There was, there was this said, tension it between- was the, the most disgusting thing he'd ever seen. He said it was the most disgusting case he ever prosecuted. There was this tension between the Kushner family and Chris Christie in the in the beginning of this whole thing. That obviously That's was right. the I never really knew what the basis yeah. of it was, but I, I think I saw a go. documentary on um, Ian, uh, Ian Kushner and it, or what's his name, Jared Kushner, yeah. um, and they talked about that case. Yeah. Unbelievable. These are the most reprehensible people. I mean, really, yeah. some of the some of the folks that are able to rise to the upper crust in the in the New York real estate world, and, and not just real estate, but wouldn't you, if you had that be kind around. of money, wouldn't you just go chill yeah, somewhere and, and lay low and have some fun and relax instead of fucking with people all the time? You know, yeah. what's the point? You know, yeah. throw some goodwill out there instead of taking pictures of your business partners and sending it to their wives and stuff. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, 2020 is just changing that last. He was, he was simultaneously he was writing a script for a made for TV movie that he was hoping that Donald. About the same damn thing. <laughs> but Jim, Jim so, what do you uh, say? Hang on, Jamie. Jim? I was just saying that 2020 is just changing one number and, and, and it's 2021 and things are still like very, very on edge and we have to still be on guard and we have to watch the election, what's going on. And Georgia is still a big thing um, with what's going on with the Senate races down there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important that we keep our focus on that because there are a lot of people, um, you know, I, I recommend if you can give five or 10 bucks to that campaign, somehow Ooh. find a way to give, do it. Yeah. It would, uh, it's going to change if they, if they win, if the Democrats win, it's going to be so it's going to make such a big difference. If not, we're still in the same shithole, you know, pretty, pretty much. Hey, we got uh, 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 Roach joining us, obviously, to weigh in a little bit on this. We got some other people popping on. He's quiet. Roach, thanks for joining the uh, the broadcast. Yeah. We were on your show last night, and we talked a little bit about 2020 reflections and 2021 projections. Uh, that's what we've sort of been kicking around here this morning. Why don't you go ahead and toss yours in real quick before we uh, we switch to our guest? Well, yeah, man. Uh, much like I said last night, man, um, I'm not going to focus on the negative. I'm going to look at the positive things um, that in all of this oh, chaos and uncertainty – you know, it has definitely brought out the best in, in people. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of evident. Also, I guess my favorite kind of occurrence thing that happened uh, is uh, the homie Chef Anna with the pot going out there and protesting with the, the potted cannabis plants and doing all the, the skits in front of the cops and having the cop going up to the state boys and asking if they could hold his pot while he tied his shoes and stuff. I thought that was <laughs> like so fucking cool. Um, so big shout out to Chef Anna with the pot, taking a bad situation and uh, doing something positive with it and, and making a smile in the process. Roach, where can we find that video if we wanted to check that out? Cause I really do. Oh, um, Chef Anna with the pot uh, on Instagram. Uh, I think he's on Facebook too. I know he does Twitch stream. You know, he he's everywhere, just like us. Uh, we're probably gonna have him on the show pretty soon coming up. So, stay Fantastic. tuned. Happy four twenty. Happy four twenty, everybody. And speaking of four twenty, welcome Mike Fisher to the broadcast, sir. Thanks. So everybody probably here anyway. Um, 
few how long ago it was now a few months ago we had mike on talked about cultivation some stuff in the industry but also a lot of you know home cultivation things it turned into a really interesting conversation it went on for a while and uh, those types of things aren't as common so in this next year we're going to ha hopefully have uh, mike on on a, on a somewhat regular basis and uh you know talk about cultivation issues for like a segment once a month or so or something along those lines and and his company, uh, and just to make sure I get it right, you, you should say it's, it's uh, Overgrow. Yep. Yep. And uh, does consulting and I'll, I'll talk stuff like that. We'll talk about that also. But um, but yeah, thanks for joining us. And just uh, we're going to have a few people joining us today to offer up their reflections and talk about uh, what's going on. And it uh, looks like you're up because you just joined us. So, hey. Mike, we have been kicking around the, the group today. Just reflections about 2020, the high points, things you, you will take away from it and recall. And then also your projections for 2021. What kind of optimism do we have? What type of hesitations do we have going into the new year? Oh, for me personally, I mean, I, I stayed pretty active throughout 2020. And um, it really was a time of kind of, like for many people, seeing what's important, but then also it was a good practice to make some changes and move forward on some things and fight some battles that I might not otherwise have, have gone through. And so I'm very sensitive to all the bad things that are going on right now, but for me, it was really motivating. And I see it as a, something that, you know, hopefully, hopefully open up some space for some good things to happen. I, we've been joined by my own personal rocket man, Gus Rosania, professor from the University of Michigan. Uh, last time you were on, we had such an incredible conversation about taking cannabis to Mars and, and maybe shipping cannabis to Mars before we get there to have things ready. It was fascinating. I'm certainly looking forward to that, too. But we'd also like to, to welcome Rachel and Nick. Also, thank you. Thanks for joining our broadcast today as well. Uh, Gus, we've been just been sort of kicking around 2020 high points, low points, and then also a look forward to 2021. Uh, Professor, what could you what could you add to the conversation there? Oh, so let's see. I, I, hi, everybody. So uh, I, I think everything that's been said is great. I think I agree with everybody. I just want to add to that the USDA uh, certification of Michigan's MDARC hemp program, which now makes it legal at a federal level, and that would allow us to take process, grow hemp, process hemp, and import, export, apply for farmers insurance, assuming the bureaucracy gets uh, lubricated soon enough, that, that's what that means. Uh, so the, the USDA certification of the hemp uh, program, MDARC hemp program is, I think, very important. Uh, it's not realized yet because there's a lot of bureaucracy that needs to be uh, dealt with. Hopefully uh, the likes of uh, Jeff Irwin, our politicians will get the bureaucracy uh, lubricated and then uh, we're going to begin to see some excitement there. On the well, yeah. I do not want to be the guy wearing the rubber glove when bureaucracy gets lubricated. I'm just going <laughs> to put that out there right off the bat. Yeah, okay. I was going to say. I and knew I had to beat I had to beat Deb or Jamie to the, the yeah. sharp comment on that. I don't even think like that. <laughs> I, I do happen to know since you haven't gotten to it yet, we have the interim director from Students for Sensible Drug Policy with us with with uh, Nick there. Oh, there's Who Ryan is? Basor back there. Ryan Basor is creepily <laughs> peering over Jim's shoulder, <laughs> watching his computer. Don't do that to another guy, man. That's I was wondering. Cool. Ryan hangs out over at Jim's when he's not anywhere else. Now I get it. Oh, he's here for oh, every oh. show. This is just the first time you guys have actually seen him. He right. often says he's going to the gym. I didn't realize he was going to gym. Oh, hey. oh. <laughs> well, let's get let's get let's get Ryan's response real quick on, on this since he's there. He's he's now committed himself to being a part of the show. <laughs> okay, so uh, Mr. Basor, uh, real quickly here, we're talking about high points 2020, uh, and then also uh, look forward. What what's your anticipation for 2021? Um, as far as in, just in cannabis in general in Michigan, criminal yeah. justice reform. Feel free to interpret as you will, because you are you have so many irons in the fire. You have a lot of different ideas and a lot of different things going on. Yeah, I would say for criminal justice reform, I'm really hoping uh, the work that was all done, you know, by by a lot of people on uh, the Michael Thompson uh, uh, case, uh, all the good, uh, I guess, comments and goodwill from 
uh, bipartisan that uh, Gret uh, the governor got for that. I hope that spurs on, you know, starts the momentum of, of what's to come. Uh, there's a lot of people on both sides of the aisle and lobbyists that I know, pretty high power ones, donating their time to work on criminal justice and stepping it up. Some pretty cool stuff going on. So I see that picking up big time in Michigan. It's a, it's a win-win uh, for, for anybody to do it. And then uh, as far as the market in, uh, in Michigan, I see the black market being a, the illicit market or gray market, black market, whatever you want to call it, being affected not by raids or by uh, capping licenses. I see it starting to get affected by prices coming down in Lansing, we, there's a really good rec eights at, for $35 right now. Um, I see that going down in the future, down to 25, good quality. And I, that's gonna affect, start affecting the black market a little bit. Uh, that's the only way to, that's the only way you address it as we know. And uh, that's kind of exciting because, uh, um, you know, it gives people choices. And then I see this is the year for the rest of the market, uh, the, the regulated market where brands kind of get into stores make their mark, kind of get the supply chain going. And, and after this year, I see it uh, be a lot tougher to get into Michigan. I also see it uh, being a great year for, I see some implosions happening on some companies we know about. I, I really believe that's gonna happen. I'm seeing empty parking lots in Lansing. I drive by every day and then I see full ones in other stores. And uh, how long can that be maintained is, is the question I'm, I'm asking. So that's, uh, yeah, that's what I think is going to happen 2021. I'm super excited about 2021. Uh, super excited about it. I think there's a lot of us uh, that are really looking forward to optimism. Rachel, would you please answer our, our oft asked question? What about your look back and your look forward as well? Yeah, um, I think one of the highest points mm -hmm. um, in 2020 was the UN finally voting to decide to deschedule cannabis from Schedule 4 um, of the 1961 drug conventions. Um, that's a really huge. It's the United Nations is finally recognizing that cannabis does have it medicinal benefits, and um, it'll. And while you know, uh, nations are going to have to um, reform their own drug laws, right? Because this is not like a global law. Um, it will become easier for millions of patients to access um additional cannabis around the world so people should know that their drug four schedule is equivalent to our drug one schedule ours is reverse from theirs so when we say schedule four that is the worst status it could have held yes yeah yeah so that's um, really exciting and then looking forward to um 2021 i you know i believe that um cannabis will be decriminalized at the federal level i'm uh, in the united states i'm very hopeful for that um, and we'll certainly see, you know, more and more states um, legalize and, and hopefully, you know, uh, more states choose to decriminalize um, possession of uh, personal possession of drugs. So I'm very looking forward. 2020 was like a really fantastic year for drug policy reform um, in spite of all of the challenges of um, the pandemic and changes in the way organizing happened. But uh, it really was an excellent year and I'm uh, very optimistic about 2021. I want to say that that makes me pretty excited because I'm actually uh, down here in Washington, D.C. Um, and of course, Rachel's interim director of Students for Sensible Drug Policy, which is a D.C. nonprofit. But that's just nice to know someone with their finger on the, the pulse of the federal level, you know, saying something something like that. Which uh, definitely. Uh, and, and I want to ask you, Rachel, since you said that you prompted the question, uh, even if we are not successful in winning both seats in Georgia, you still think there's going to be decriminalization in this in this upcoming legislature, or do you think that the uh, you know executive branch will make it lowest level priority or something along those lines? Yeah. How do you think it's going to happen? Yeah, so um, I, you know, it, the, the more act passing the Senate certainly hinges on uh, the Georgia runoff races, um, which uh, are, you know, very tight. Um, I'm, you know, I'm optimistic that like at least one of them will, you know, go to the Democrats, but um, you know, the I would like to hold the Biden administration to their promise that um, marijuana will be decriminalized. Um, and so I'd like to see the executive branch take some kind of action on, you know, uh, making a you know, lowest level priority. I, I agree. Uh, thank you for all the work you do. Oftentimes here on a statewide level, we have an outsider's perspective of what's going on federally, but you're inside the window and, and we're on the outside. So we appreciate you lending your, your guidance. Nick, what about you? You, you uh, have you had your foot in many different doors uh, this last year as far as federally is also state-based uh, in the industry uh, and then as an observer. 
Um, what do you think of when you think of 2020? What stands out in your mind? Well, there's there's a lot. I'm actually um, going to take a little bit of a different route than Rachel, and I this may have been said already. I know a lot has probably been said, um, but in, in maybe uh, it's, it's certainly tangible in a lot of states and, um, you know, had a pretty huge impact on the um, the longevity of the industry and a lot of the businesses, um, but also just very symbolically, I think it's incredibly important that cannabis was labeled as a, as a essential service. Um, so I don't know if that had been mentioned and discussed, uh, you know, in the uh, 15 minutes prior to hopping on, but it definitely, to me, really, um, you know, sets in stone that cannabis is here to stay as a as a business as a commodity as a medicine and that the people want it and also knowing that we have a legislature in michigan and in a handful of other states that recognize its importance and recognize that it it shouldn't be um you know something that it, it shouldn't be thrown out it is you know access is what we've really been fighting for for a long time so to have access and reliable access actually acknowledged was just huge i think and several states came to that conclusion not just michigan several states labeled it as an essential service yeah yeah here in dc too they labeled it as an essential service well yeah in dc shit you got trump and white house you gotta have something to chill out with God. <laughs> not right essential. now he's in mar-a-lago Mar that's why i'm i'm here <laughs>